Today's video is about SanDisk Extreme Portable SSD, a very common unit. If you're in a situation where your device isn't getting recognized, there's a good chance that the data can still be recovered. This video is gonna show you how I do it and maybe uh, it can apply to your case. If you're not capable of getting it done, don't worry. The link in the description can take you to our website where you can request us to do it for you. That's not a problem and you can send it in. Uh, check this out. If you got a SanDisk Extreme portable SSD that has not failed yet, watch this video till the end. We're gonna make this beast roar once again, at least for the duration of the data transfer. I'm connecting it to a Gibspire USB stabilizer power on the unit. We got the consumption at 170 milliamps. We're getting SanDisk Extreme 55 AE recognition, but we don't get the capacity. We have nothing on our coils here. Close to nothing here. We got 3.3. 3.3 is coming in, but then what happens to it after? 3.3 here, because we're not getting proper power, the capacitors on our NAND also don't show anything important. So basically nothing is powering on, that's what it, the SSD is trying to tell us. Uh, several ways how do we can how we can make that happen and one of these ways is to take out the um, power management IC and get it replaced this is what they look like fresh in a package so um, to take it out I'm just going to heat it up with some hot air straight to the back of the USB board USB adapter you can maybe try like slicing in like some dental floss in there or something. But if it's warm, usually it doesn't resist that much. You don't need to heat it up too much. Just make sure you don't burn yourself. Yeah, this is the piece of tape on the back. And it's super tacky, like this is a really good tape. If I was to shop around for tape, I would want the tape to, to do exactly that. If this device was encrypted, portable SSDs sometimes have a, like a encryption suite, like a vault. And if it's set up, we're gonna need this adapter. It's uh, super important. I can show you what it does on PC3000 when I connect it the way it is. Let's slide this in. Who knows, maybe it was the board that's, that was damaged, right? So there's the control panel. If we power on the device, we get 60 milliamps consumption, no PHY light. And that's not because the frequency is long. It's simply because we don't get anything powered on. 0 0.06 is simply not enough for this device. Here's a working device. But yeah, that's the consumption that it needs to be at, 250, 280, somewhere around that. And then if it's password protected, it's not going to let us read. That's when we need that adapter. You see the capacity comes up. If I go into sector edit, I can access the data. So that's the sort of consumption that we're looking for. So what is the challenge with removing the power management I see from this unit? Uh, it's got a little bit of uh, uh, epoxy around it and that can be hard to remove for some but I think like, we're gonna be able to get that done no problem usually when I work I like to pull uh, some of these components out of, out of the way so I can get more room to work with this chip so we're gonna take away this capacitor this coil um, and maybe this capacitor and then we can just clean up everything around it, lift it, replace, and put everything back on. So I'm going to start by cleaning off uh, the residue from these thermal pads. Some of the stuff can get between these capacitors and stuff. It could be in the way. 
want to make sure that all that stuff is gone. So I don't lose any components, I'm just gonna scrape a little bit of a mask here and um, make two pads, one for the capacitor, one for the coil. There's two tiny scrapes here. Yeah, these chips are really um, easy to to fracture and they go bad. So at first, before I bought a bunch of these chips on the loose, uh, if I was to remove them from the donor, I had to be extremely careful pulling them from the donor because, uh, well, as you can see, we just chipped the corner right there. But because it's a faulty unit, it doesn't really matter. Okay, now we can try to step it up. And with the help of a spatula, I'm gonna try to take this chip off. Now I'm gonna get a tiny piece of uh, wick. This is a brand new one. See, so it's got all the nice balls underneath it. Let's return these components back. As long as we're getting different voltages and not just 3.2 or 3.3 or whatever, uh, we should be good. At this point, I can turn this off and I need a USB adapter. Now oh, there's the adapter. Let's plug this in. There's the, um, the device. We can see that it's working hard. What sort of voltages we're getting on different types of capacitors. Okay, let's try this out. So we were getting 3.3 before. That's going in. 3.3 is here. 0 0.8, that's already good. 0 0.8, 3.2, on our coils we got 0 0.8, 2.5, there's a capacitor, 2.5, this coil 1.3, and this coil 0 0.8. And what do we have on our NANDs? Should be getting 2.5 and 1.2, I think. So 2.5, and 1.2, like I said. Yeah, so looks like the device is running. Auto detect, detects PCI Express, NVMe.
power up our unit, PHY light comes on. If we go into universal utility, we see the passport, Western Digital SM550E. There's a serial number. And when we go to sector edit, we have access to the data. That's the very first sector. So at this point, we would begin a disk imaging task. So start up data extractor. When the task comes up, we can start imaging the entire thing if we wanted to. But if we wanted to uh, be more specific and go after some type of files or just to use space, here. So it's about 300 gigabytes of use space. But uh, overall, we can see that it's running steady. Green means good. And if we want to confirm that this is actually good data and not some fluke or just a bunch of zeros coming through, we switch to meta headers. And we can see that uh, we're actually seeing some content. Gray means it's some type of data inside and uh, everything is running smoothly. And that's precisely how it's done. So if you're interested in getting your device fixed, link in the description. Thank you for watching this episode. I'll see you all in the next one.